please welcome our first speaker, Jason Glickman, Executive Vice President, Engineering, Planning, and Strategy for PG&E. And thank you for joining us. We know some people traveled here uh, from far away. We know that some of you stayed up late or got up early. We really appreciate it. What I was saying that I wanted to start by having a reflection you know, on where we are as everyone here in this room and around the world leads us in this energy transition. By 2035, every passenger vehicle in California that's sold will be electric. By 2045, we'll be powering every home in our hometowns and the entire economy with 100% clean energy, 24 by 7 by 365. Think about that. By definition, that has never been done before. It's never been done before. It's a huge challenge, it's a huge opportunity, and it's one that, frankly, we embrace. We embrace it in California, we embrace it in PG&E. And why are we optimistic? Why am I so optimistic? Because we've done hard things before. We've done hard things before. If California were a country, we would be one of the top five economies in the world. And we didn't get there by accident. We didn't get there overnight. We have a legacy of firsts, a legacy of innovation, a legacy of pushing the envelope in this state for the world. And as California's largest energy provider, PG&E has been there shoulder to shoulder every step of the way. If we look back over our company's history and the state's history, over 100 years, 150 some years ago, the first gas utility in the western US was right here, PG&E in San Francisco. The first central electric generating station was right here, PG&E, the first one in the country. Fast forward to the 1940s, right after World War II, 1946, the five years after that, we experienced a 40% growth in our population in that five-year period. Imagine that, just in five years. We built, I had to, I had to check, to triple check this fact because it blew my mind. We built 19 new generating plants in that five-year period. Thousands and thousands of miles of transmission and distribution pipes and wires to serve that growth. 1969. Stanford University became one of the first four nodes of ARPANET, the precursor to the internet. 1985, Diablo Canyon Power Plant opened. Today, it's the last nuclear power plant in operation in California. It's regularly recognized for its safety and operational performance. And we're really proud and pleased that with the passage of Senate Bill 846 last year, that plant's gonna continue that performance through the end of this decade. So when we fast forward to today, that innovation, it continues. It continues in different forms and we need to evolve to meet the changing needs of our climate, the changing needs of our economy, the changing needs of our customers. I talked about how in the late 19th century and in the middle of this century, we built a lot of central station plants. Example I'm gonna talk about here is not a central station plant, in case you noticed. This is Briceburg, California, and if you zoomed out, what you would see is a beautiful community in the foothills, I believe it's on the Merced River, right near Yosemite National Park. It's a stunning location. It's a remote community, and it is in high fire threat district. In 2019, a fire of unknown origin swept through the area, and it destroyed about a mile and a half of overhead distribution line, serving this community, this rural community. That community was out without, without power. We had them on temporary generation for a period of time. And we could have gone back overhead. We could have gone back with hardened overhead lines. We could have gone back underground. In this instance, we said, let's try something different. There was an idea about a concept called a standalone power system is the, is the technical term, or a remote grid. This is not a microgrid that islands from the grid from time to time. This is a remote grid that operates independently 100% of the time. And in the two years or so since it's operated, it's operated with 95% clean energy, powered by its on-site solar and batteries, and 5% of the time it needs to rely on its propane generator 
You can imagine this winter when it was raining and cloudy for days on end, that propane generator was important. But 95% of the time, clean, 100% reliability, not a single outage, momentary or sustained for these customers during that two year period. And they're not paying a dime more than they otherwise would have been paying. Think about that. 95% clean, 100% reliable, same bill. And when we set out to do this, we said, this is not a pilot. Sometimes the word pilot, you know, gets an interesting rap in our industry, right? This was a prototype. This was a prototype. We said, we're going to do one, and then we're going to have four online today by 2023. We're going to have 30 by 2026. And we see the potential hundreds of these types of systems throughout our service territory as part of our wildfire mitigation efforts and continuing the push for a grid that's more resilient and more decentralized. And I will say as we did this, and for some of our partners who, who I think are in the room and online, uh, Box Power, a homegrown company out of Grass Valley, California, New Sun Road, Patelco, there was some learning along the way. There was some learning along the way for us and for you in terms of what does it take to scale? What does it take from a contracting perspective, from a design and engineering perspective, permitting, construction? This is a different way of working when we're working with startups, and we're learning. We're learning. And we're going to continue to look for those opportunities and those scaling muscles, whether it's on remote grids or any other innovation that we're working on together. Part of what you're going to hear, why we're so interested in scaling, and we sometimes use the phrase, uh, we want to be your best customer, right? And we've taken a stand that it's enjoyable to work with PG&E. It's important to scale to have impact in our territory. It's also important for the world, right? Climate change requires collective action. And we're humbled by the opportunity to lead at PG&E in California, but we also recognize we need the rest of the world to work with us. And that's why we're so gratified to have such global representation here today. And what we would offer, you know, if you think about why lead in California, why join us in this journey in California? Well, if it can work here, it can work anywhere in the world. Think about our service territory. We serve 16 million people from the coast to the mountains, from great cities like San Francisco and San Jose to rural areas, across a huge range of climate impacts and ecosystems. And so if you can make it work and scale it here with us, you can make it work and scale it anywhere in the world. Just look at our regions, our five regions that we serve. The Bay Area, which draws the imagination of the world, draws people here for economic, cultural reasons. If you wander around San Francisco or the surrounding communities, you'll hear 160 different languages spoken. 160 different languages. We are also the North Valley and Sierra, where our snowpack, especially in a year like this, our lakes and our rivers provide drinking water to millions of Californians and irrigation water for some of the most productive farmland anywhere in the world. We are the Central Valley, where 25% of the fruits and vegetables in this country are grown, and where also, today, some of the most acute heat-related impacts of climate change are already being felt, and we're having to grapple with that. We are the North Coast, where over 40% of old-growth redwoods live. These are trees that grow over 300 feet tall and live to 1,800 years old. And we're going to keep doing our part to preserve those trees. And we're also the South Bay and Central Coast. I see you, Teresa, our Vice President of the South Bay and Central Coast. This region is the home to Silicon Valley, the epicenter of California's technology industry with almost 2 million jobs, and it's also a home to the coastline of Highway 1. So when you look across these regions and you think about what is it going to take to get to that 100% clean energy future? What is it going to take to battle climate change? What is it going to take if and when we do it here, we can do it anywhere in the world? And you know, one thing that's really important to note, we, we take pride and privilege in being a utility company. 
in serving all, and serving all 16 million of those customers across a diverse range of hometowns. Um, our True North strategy is a 10-year strategy to be the great utility that our customers deserve, that our climate demands as we look to the future. It is a utility strategy. It all starts with our purpose, delivering for our hometowns, serving our planet, and leading with love. It focuses on the outcomes we'll deliver, the behaviors and the virtues we have. Curiosity is gonna show up a lot today, I expect. And it's also how we will transform our energy system in service of our customers for that future. You know, I'd note I, my PG&E coworkers who are here, this page is quite familiar because this is the same page we use. We are showing the world, this is PG&E's strategy. It's the same page we use with the executive team, with the board, and the world. And every single day, 26,000 coworkers are getting up and they're working to bring this strategy to life. They're working to bring this strategy to life. And what we're doing here with our R&D strategy and innovation report, which you all have a copy, I know, you've, I know you've all read it. It's, uh, it's about, I think it's about 80, how many pages is this thing? 100, thank you. So there will be a break. I got to page 80, yeah. I skimmed a couple. Um, 143 pages, you can read it, at, read it at the break if you haven't. But what's notable about this report, and Quinn will talk more about this in a minute, is what it does is it takes our strategy and says, where do we need your help? Where are we humbly asking for your help to bring this page to life faster, more cost effectively for more customers? That's what it is all about. We are not starting new lines of business. We're not off doing experiments for the sake of experiments. It is to bring this to life in the next 10 years, which you know, in some circles may sound like a long time, but when we're building 40 and 50 year assets, you know, 10 years is the blink of an eye, people. We gotta get moving. We feel that sense of urgency. So we're grounded in six sets of initiatives focused on our energy system and where we need your help on bringing that True North strategy to life. Three around the future of the grid in supply and load management, electric vehicles, and integrated grid planning. Two in climate resilience and wildfires and undergrounding, where we see the most acute needs. And last but certainly not least, the gas system, which I would note if you go through all 143 pages of the report, actually has the most problem statements associated with it. We see the gas system playing a vital role for a very long time, being safe and reliable and decarbonized, and we are at the absolute leading edge of that in the world, and we're gonna need your help to do so. Okay, let's get down to some brass tacks, just in terms of how the day's gonna go. Um, where you're gonna have the opportunity to hear from a number of our partners throughout the morning on what they see and how we're working together. Patty's gonna to share some of her perspectives and welcome some special guests from Tesla, Microsoft, and Schneider. We'll also talk about how we intend to operationalize this strategy and work with all of you. Uh, we'll have lunch, then we'll go move into breakouts throughout the afternoon, and we'll have, again, for folks online and physically here in San Ramon, the setup is hybrid, so you can join the breakouts, and then we'll wrap things up, and we'll have a reception here. So again, thank you all for being here. It's a really exciting new day for all of us at PG&E. We're thrilled to have you all here, and uh, let's get to work. Thank you.